Recently, I made the prudent financial decision to buy a 512GB OLED Steam Deck from www.store.steampowered.com. I did this for two reasons. One, as an Australian currently living in Canada, I've already had to say goodbye to one PC before, and this will prevent me from having to do that a second time if I'm forced to leave the country on account of my many crimes. And two, as an Australian, period, you can't buy these things back in my home country. So now I can be the envy of all my weird gamer friends. Take that, Regan. However, I'm somebody who struggles to spend even a single dollar on something that I haven't done extensive research on beforehand, especially when it comes to consumer electronics. I did more research when buying the Steam Deck than I did when choosing a country to live. That's why I'm in Canada. So I watch YouTube reviews, I read forum posts, I even went to Reddit. Everything people have been saying about this thing is correct. It's functional, it runs games well, it's light, it's cool. You can only smell the heat from the exhaust fumes if you do that. So you've probably already heard about how good this thing is. It's a handheld gaming PC that runs its own Linux operating system, it's got Steam shit built directly into it, it's got however fucking many gigs of RAM it has, I don't know. A lot of people have done way more technical reviews on this, and I am simply not smart enough to do anything like that, so if you haven't heard anything about this machine before, here's the entire Linus Tech Tips review in five seconds. If you didn't understand that, neither did I, and I watched the whole thing. There is so much good stuff in the Steam Deck to talk about, most of which I am far too stupid to cover. Discuss? One of them. But because there is so much good shit, there's a couple of pieces of said good shit that I haven't heard anybody talking about. And look, these three features might be very specific things that only I care about, but I thought, you know what, maybe there's somebody out there who thinks just like me. Maybe I'm not alone in the world. Maybe after all this time, I can find someone who I could call a friend. Or at least somebody who has the same weird taste in consumer technology that I do. But enough preamble. Here are my three favorite features of the Steam Deck that I don't see anybody talking about. Oh, but I heard this person talk about it here, or this person do... Oh, shut up. It's a YouTube video. Here's a fun little fact about me. I fucking hate playing shooters on consoles. Shooters are some of my favorite games of all time. Like. I love Wolfenstein, I love Doom, I love Apex Legends. I love TF2! But I was born and raised on PC gaming, and my tiny little ape brain cannot comprehend playing a shooter with two... thumbsticks. I can't even think of the word. One of my most distinct childhood memories is when my mother played one round of a split-screen first-person shooter with me and my brothers, and she managed to walk straight ahead into a wall, turn her camera directly up at the sky, and then immediately get confused, thinking that the wall in front of her was the floor, and the skybox in the distance was somehow a wall 200 meters away. That's just kind of the biological profile of gamer that I have to work with. My disdain for shooters on consoles is something that I feel especially with modern shooters. You know, like Apex Legends. These games are really fast paced, you've got a bunch of character abilities and equipment. And like, you're telling me that I have to take my thumb off the stick that makes me move to select the button that makes me pull out a grenade so I can then throw it with fingers on the other side of the controller? Or if I'm running away from bad guys, I have to take my thumb off the stick that's making me look around to press the button to open the door, and then I have to put it back Spin all the way around, take it off, to press the button again to lock the door behind me? By the time I've taken the two seconds it requires for me to do the, like, hand thing to figure out which hand is which, I've been shot and killed. By a guy, in real life, in my own house. This genetic defect of mine was definitely a concern for me before buying the Steam Deck. My tiny little ape brain told me, however, that I could just use the trackpads on either side of the machine to have a more PC-like aiming experience. Like I would use my thumb on the trackpad to look around in the game as though I was using an actual tangible mouse. Uh, spoiler alert, that's not how that fucking works. I, I love these trackpads. Don't get me wrong, city skyline for days. Mwah, love that. Not for Helldivers. But the device has an inbuilt gyroscope function 
which has been revolutionary for me in playing these kinds of games. Basically, by tilting the device in physical space, you can aim around your environment as though you're moving the right joystick. This helps you make really subtle movements, or even track your targets while you're moving and shooting. The gyroscope has to be activated in the controller settings for the individual game you're playing, but by default the gyroscope only activates when you have your thumb on the right stick. Keep in mind I say on the stick, not pressing the stick, as it only takes a subtle touch to trigger the system. You can also bind the gyroscope to other features, like one of the buttons on the back, or maybe you want to press the thumbstick in to toggle the gyroscope on or off. You have a lot of flexibility with choosing how you want to use this system. By only requiring a slight touch in most cases, however, this means you won't accidentally whip around in space if you readjust your seat or something like that. You can keep your camera steady because the gyroscope will only work when you want it to. It might take some getting used to, but if you've ever played Splatoon on the Nintendo Wii U, a gaming memory that I assume that everybody has, the gyroscope function will make you feel right at home when playing shooters. At least for me, anyway. The four buttons on the back have also been pretty instrumental for me for playing these types of games. Like I said, I often find it really distracting when I have to take one of my thumbs off the sticks to press one of the buttons that sit beside it. So using these buttons on the back and binding them to key features of the games that I'm playing allows me to have a lot more direct input with my shooters. Like sometimes for the right buttons, I'll even go so far as to bind them to jump and crouch just so I can use some of the really fast paced movement abilities of some of these more modern shooter games. I shouldn't describe them as shooter games. Like that makes me feel like I'm fucking 80 years old. Now some of you might think I'm weird for enjoying the gyro controls on the Steam Deck, but the one thing you need to keep in mind is that my favorite game growing up was WarioWare Twisted. That's right, the Game Boy Advance WarioWare game that had a whole fucking gyroscope sensor like built into the cartridge that you had to physically twist your Game Boy Advance around to play the game. That shit slapped and I won't hear anything bad against it. Now I'm seriously wondering if I can emulate WarioWare Twisted onto this thing and play it on the go as a 20 something year old. That actually fucks, I should look up if I can do that or not. Now I know what you might be thinking, like Ethan, the Steam Deck is a computer. Of course you can put it to sleep, idiot. You're a dumb asshole who doesn't know fucking shit about anything. Like, why are you even making videos? Like, you make me so fucking angry. Like, I just want to strangle you. However, when I say that I enjoy the fact that you can put the Steam Deck to sleep, I mean you can put the Steam Deck to sleep and it will actively suspend your game. It's not like closing a laptop lid where your computer is still technically on and it's just doing a whole bunch of like whack shit behind the scenes and is still technically running just without a screen that's active and displaying pixels. When you put the Steam Deck to sleep, it fully suspends your game. Like an ancient beetle trapped in a mass of amber. That means that if, say, I'm in the middle of a big old Baldur's Gate 3 fight and my idiot 11 year old son dares to request my attention and adoration, I can just press the big red power button on the top of the deck and put it to sleep. When I return seven minutes later, I simply press that button again and I can jump back into the game as though no time has passed at all. Now I'm what you call a short sprint gamer. I like to play 15 minutes here, 20 minutes there, maybe an hour if it's like a weekend. I rarely sit down and play video games for hours on end unless I'm riddled with coronavirus, deeply depressed, or both. So the ability to just put this down and pick it back up again anytime I want, like that's mwah, better than sex. You also don't have to wait for long boot up times, you know, things lagging as a million other background processes kick off in the background. You don't have to boot up your games again from scratch. It's just one button, boom, you're in the game. The only thing I will say is that its efficiency here kind of varies by the game you're playing. For games that connect to servers or other online components, like obviously suspending your game in time and space is gonna, you know, disconnect you from those servers. A good example for this is Dark Souls 3. After awakening the deck mid-gameplay, you'll eventually get booted out to the menu, as the game realizes it's been disconnected from its servers. You can get around this particular case by forcing the game to launch in offline mode via its settings, but then you'll lose those funny little orange messages and bloodstains you see all over the place. Also, side note, do you know that you can still get invaded by other players in Dark Souls 3, even if you have the game set to offline mode? It just creates a bot player with like, full health, full resources, full Estus. It just comes out of nowhere and fucking 
kicks your ass. Who thought was that? Who thought that was a good idea? Oh, just don't use embers and you won't get invaded. How the fuck am I supposed to know that? The description on the embers is just get health. I enjoy Dark Souls. I have never met a person who enjoys Dark Souls that I, in turn, have also enjoyed. Myself included. The Steam Deck has a lot of good things going for it. Portability, customizability, a system that's super easy to pirate games on, a inbuilt store system that's so convenient and user-friendly it's actually more convenient to spend the money than it is to pirate the games and like you feel fine for doing that hardware that's comfortable to hold a system that's sleek and cool <sighs> exhaust fans that don't smell as bad as you might think the fact that this screen has a night mode is literally like so low down on the list of cool things it has going for it that like yeah this one i don't i don't really mind that i didn't hear a single person talk about it. Like, it's it's probably not even something that 90% of the population gives a shit about. But I'm the other 10%. It matters to me. By activating night mode in the Steam Deck settings, the screen is essentially overlaid with a warm color filter that makes the screen a little easier on the eyes, especially at night. Hence the name. Now, I'm not an octorologist or whatever fucking doctor looks at eyes, but the one thing I do know is that when I spend a little bit too long watching TikTok before my strict 9pm bedtime, I find it really difficult to go to sleep and I am absolutely ruined for the next day. This bad sleep also sometimes subjects me to the recurring nightmare I've been having as a child where the techno trousers from Wallace and Gromit try to hunt me down and kill me. Oh, haha, ha, funny hyperbole for content. That's real. That's a real dream that I've had on multiple occasions in my life that I have lived. It doesn't happen every night. But it's happened. Night mode can be activated and deactivated manually from the Steam Deck settings, but it can also be scheduled to activate automatically at a time of your choosing. I have it set to kick in at around 8pm, which A, gives my eyes a bit of an easier time in that last hour that I have of waking consciousness before I have to go to bed, and B, it reminds me that time has passed since I sat down to play video games at 4pm, and I've definitely missed that meeting that I was supposed to have at 4.45 with my boss. It's also possible to really customize your night mode, Changing things like the tint, the primary hue, the peak saturation, and a whole bunch of other settings which I fully do not understand, but I'm glad they're there for the people that do. This tiny feature is really just a testament to the Steam Deck's focus on functionality. The night mode filter doesn't make games look great. 90% of the time it makes them look actively worse. But it isn't about flashy spectacle or PlayStation 7 quality graphics. It's about giving gamers a more comfortable experience that allows them to get the maximum enjoyment from their consumer technology, which in turn causes them to play games more frequently, which in turn causes them to buy games more frequently, which in turn makes them buy more games from the Steam store, which nets Valve, the makers of the Steam Deck, 30% on all of the purchases you make on those games on their store to play on their hardware that you bought from them. So, it drives up their profits, and... Uh... So anyway, there's my little rant on the three features of the Steam Deck that I think kinda slipped under the radar. There is so much good packed in this little device that I'm glad that Valve's last foray into physical hardware failed dismally and probably cost the company millions of dollars. Live and learn, right? So anyway, join me next week as I go through my three favorite features of the Steam Link, a $50 device that I bought for 10 that would eventually go on to become obsolete by an app that you can download for free. Like and subscribe.